Good morning, everybody. Your Excellency Limpo Dr. Tandin Dorji, Your Excellency Senator the Honorable Z. Seselja, Your Excellency Dasho Dechen Wangmo, Your Excellency Dr. Mansuk Mandavia, Your Excellency Dr. Sofon Mekton, Honorable Ms. Pauline McNeil, Distinguished Panelists, Guests, Friends, and Colleagues. It is my great pleasure to welcome all of you to the 2021 Asia Pacific Leaders Dialogue for Malaria Elimination, hosted by the Ministry of Health, Royal Government of Bhutan, the Asia Pacific Leaders Malaria Alliance, APLMA, and the Asia Pacific Malaria Elimination Network, APMIN. I am Amita Chebi, Senior Director for Country Engagement, APMIN and Access at APLMA. I'm going to be your host for this first session. COVID-19 has had a negative effect on health outcomes for other communicable diseases, such as malaria, HIV, and tuberculosis. For the last two years, health systems are facing the dual burden of combating malaria, as well as managing new COVID-19 infections. The pandemic has strained the health system in many countries and led to the temporary interruption of malaria services, such as routine surveillance and preventive interventions. As the world continues to respond to the pandemic, and as we learn from the test of resilience that COVID-19 has, now is the time to consider other health priorities, including malaria. Take stock of what needs to be done to stay on track towards the elimination goal. This year, the Virtual Leaders Dialogue focuses on the theme, Regional Collaboration for Malaria Elimination and Health Security. Today, we're very honored to have His Excellency Limpo Dr. Honorable Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Government of Bhutan, to deliver the inaugural remarks. Honorable Limpo Dr. Tandin Dorji was appointed as the Minister for Foreign Affairs of Bhutan in November 2018. A pediatrician by profession, the Honorable Limpo has extensive experience in the health he has played a critical role in Bhutan's polio, measles, and rubella el elimination efforts. Prior to joining, Honorable Limpo was also actively involved in various health activities and has several publications to his credit. He has a master's in education from the Canberra University of Australia, master's in international public health from the School of Public Health, Sydney University. To you, Your Excellency. His Excellency Sri Mansuk Mandavia, Union Minister of Health of India, Senator the Honorable Z. Cecilia, Minister for International Development and the Pacific of Australia, His Excellency Mr. Kulvik Togamana, Minister of Health of the Solomon Islands, His Excellency Dr. Sofon Mekton, Vice Minister of Public Health of Thailand, His, Her Excellency Tashu Dichen Wangmo, Minister of Health of Bhutan, Dr. Sartik Das, the Chief Executive Officer of the Asia-Pacific Leaders uh, Malaria Alliance, Asia-Pacific Malaria Elimination Network, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. I bring to you the warm greetings of His Majesty the King, Her Majesty the Queen, the Royal Government and the people of Bhutan. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome all of you to the 2021 Asia-Pacific Leaders Dialogue for Malaria Elimination. While it is unfortunate that we could not meet each other in person this time, we look forward to welcoming you all to Bhutan in the near future. During the course of the last two decades, the world has achieved unprecedented success in malaria control, which has resulted in the prevention of over 1.5 billion new malaria infections and aversion of over 7.6 million deaths globally. According to the WHO's latest malaria World Malaria Report, an estimated 241 million malaria infection cases and 627,000 malaria deaths were reported globally in 2020. This figure represents, represents an increase of over 14 million more infection cases and 69,000 deaths in 2020 as compared to the statistics of 2019. Approximately over two thirds of these additional deaths were linked to disruptions in the provision of timely malaria prevention 
diagnosis and treatments due to the prevailing COVID-19 pandemic. This pandemic has affected many disease control programs and the malaria elimination and control program has been no exception. After several years of seeing steady progress, it is extremely concerning that the reduction in global malaria cases has stalled since 2018. Within the Southeast Asian region, after the malaria-free certification of Maldives and Sri Lanka, no country has achieved the elimination target despite many reaching the verge of elimination. It is therefore crucial that we assess our progress and activities and move forward with renewed energy and focus. However, it is also heartening to note that several countries have achieved elimination goal for malaria and over 40 countries have been certified malaria-free with recent inclusion of China and El Salvador in 2021, Algeria and Argentina in 2019, and Paraguay and Uzbekistan in 2018. I congratulate the governments and the people of these countries for their remarkable achievement. In Bhutan, the royal government on our part continues to make sustained and concerted efforts to eliminate malaria. Over the years, we have made impressive gains in malaria control by bringing the caseload down from as high as 40,000 in 1994 to just two indigenous cases in 2019. However, we recorded 22 indigenous cases in the year 2020 amidst the disruptions in service delivery triggered by the COVID-19 pandemic. We also had to twice reset our elimination target from the year 2018 to 2020 and recently from 2020 to 2022. Despite all these challenges that confront us, we remain resolute and firm in our commitment to achieve this new malaria elimination target. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, our past experiences in malaria control have shown that the last remaining mile of elimination phase is the most challenging one. It is therefore extremely crucial that the global, regional and national malaria programs take into account the lessons from the past and accordingly leverage it to overcome the last mile challenge. I therefore call upon all countries to sustain this commitment and reinvigorate efforts towards eliminating malaria. This will require greater and effective collaboration and coordination between countries for joint elimination response, especially when, when countries are nearing the end stage of malaria elimination. The world continues to grapple with the COVID-19 pandemic, not knowing when this will come to an end. Notwithstanding this uncertainty, we all must continue to build resilient and dynamic national health systems on the values of international solidarity in addressing diseases and pandemics. We have no time to waste. As Global Vision 2030 is almost at our doorstep, we must strive harder together and pick our pace and achieve that vision for one and all and not let history repeat itself. I thank you for your attention. Karinche and Tashtilena. On behalf of APLMA and our distinguished guests today, we would like to express our gratitude to Honorable Limpo, Dr. Dorji, for addressing our leaders dialogue today. As the Honorable Limpo has highlighted, leadership commitment and unwavering support towards malaria elimination efforts are critical. The Kingdom of Bhutan has set an extraordinary example for the region and the world that demonstrates the power of cross-sectoral collaboration and a whole of government approach. Thank you again for reinforcing these lessons of collaboration today and for honoring us with your presence. While we look to the near future when we can be welcomed back to Bhutan and enjoy the warmth and hospitality there, for now, here's a short video on the beautiful kingdom of Bhutan.
to now open the dialogue, I'd like to call upon Dr. Kamini Mendes, the interim board chair of Applema AppMen, to officially welcome you to the leaders' dialogue. Dr. Mendes is Professor Emeritus at the University of Colombo, Sri Lanka, former malaria expert at the World Health Organization, medical doctor, researcher, and a public health professional. She has many decades of experience in malaria control and elimination and serves on several international boards and committees on health. Dr. Kamini, over to you. Uh, Amita. Your Excellency, Honorable Foreign Minister of Bhutan, Dr. Tandin Dorji, distinguished panelists, guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2021 Asia-Pacific Leaders Dialogue for Malaria Elimination on behalf of the Apple Ma Ackman Board of Directors and the Secretariat. I would like to thank the Royal Government of Bhutan for graciously hosting the 2021 Leaders Dialogue. I'd particularly like to extend my heartfelt thanks to Her Excellency Dasho Dechen Wangmo, Honorable Minister of Health of Bhutan and colleagues of the Ministry of Health for continued leadership and support without which this dialogue would not have been possible. There has been a series of East Asia summits in the past. The ninth East Asia summit in 2014 was where 18 Asia Pacific heads of state committed to the goal of an Asia-Pacific free of malaria by 2030. More recently, at the 15th East Asia Summit in 2020, the leaders reaffirmed their commitment to the goal of an Asia-Pacific free of malaria by the year 2030. The Asia-Pacific region has made incredible progress towards malaria elimination. Over the past 20 years in the Southeast Asia region, malaria cases have reduced by a staggering 78% from 22 million in, in the year 2000 to 5 million in 2020. And malaria deaths decreased by as much as 75%. In the Western Pacific region, malaria cases decreased by 39% from 2.8 million cases in the year 2000 to an estimated 1.7 million cases in the year 2020. Malaria deaths also de decreased significantly in that region by 47%. Bhutan itself has made an exceptional progress towards eliminating malaria and has committed to WHO's Elimination by 2025 initiative, recording zero deaths since 2019. Impressively, several countries in the region have eliminated malaria. The Republic of Maldives, uh, Sri Lanka and China were certified by the, the World Health Organization as malaria-free countries in the past 10 years. Several other countries, Bhutan, Timor-Leste, Malaysia, are very near elimination. The Greater Mekong sub-region, where multi-drug resistance is a major threat, is making extremely good progress towards elimination. I would also like to take this opportunity to congratulate China for being certified for malaria as malaria-free in 2021 after a very long battle, China being the fourth country in the region to be certified as such after Sri Lanka, Maldives and Singapore. The fact that countries with such diverse conditions and backgrounds as China and Sri Lanka could eliminate malaria means that every country can do it. What these countries had in common were a strong political commitment, a whole of government approach, a robust surveillance and response system, sustained domestic funding for malaria. These have been the key to elimination success in those countries. Since 2017, Appleman and Appman have provided a platform for high-level dialogue and the exchange of information among national, regional and global stakeholders in the fight against malaria. Apple Mapman have facilitated a series of meetings of senior officials of countries in the Asia-Pacific. In 2017, 2019 and 2020, these senior officials' meetings were hosted by the governments of Myanmar, Thailand and Vietnam, respectively. At each of these meetings, senior officials called for action to accelerate malaria elimination in the region. 
The response to COVID-19 has unfortunately overwhelmed health systems and several countries have seen an increase in malaria cases. In the Western Pacific region, malaria cases had actually increased by 19% from 2019 to 2020 with the onset of the pandemic. This was mainly due to increases in malaria in Papua New Guinea. Even Bhutan reported 22 cases of malaria in 2020, which was up from two cases in 2019. As the world continues to respond to COVID-19, it is critical to maintain the momentum against malaria to ensure lives are saved and progress is not lost. This year, the overarching goal of the high-level dialogue is to advocate for regional collaboration to achieve malaria elimination against the backdrop of the COVID-19 pandemic, highlighting the urgency of this task for regional health security. Specifically, today's dialogue will discuss ways in which ministries of health collaborate with each other and with other ministries for malaria control and elimination. It will highlight the importance of cross-border collaboration between neighboring countries and identify key strategies to effectively address border malaria. Share best practices on how countries sustained gains made towards fighting malaria over the past decade against the backdrop of COVID-19. And we'll explore ways for countries to sustain domestic financing for continued malaria prevention efforts. I once again welcome all of you to this important dialogue and I look forward to productive discussions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kamini, for your remarks. Now we are honored to hear from His Excellency, Dr. Mansuk Mandavia, Honorable Minister of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India. Dr. Mandavia became India's Minister of Health and Family Welfare in July this year. He also serves concurrently as the Minister of Chemicals and Fertilizers and was previously Minister of State for Ports, Shipping and Waterways. Dr. Mandavia has played a critical role in the growth and development of new India and has also been an ardent propagator for women's health and women's rights. We will now hear from Dr. Mansuk Mandavia. Namaste. Honorable Prime Minister of Bhutan, Dr. Lote Sering, His Excellency Dasho Diken Wangmo, Honorable Minister of Health, Bhutan, His Excellency Kulvik Togamen, Honorable Minister of Health and Medical Services, Solomon Island, his Excellency Dr. Shafon Macthon, Honorable Vice Minister of Health, Thailand, Dr. Kamini Mendes, Interim Board Co Chair, APLMA, Epman, greeting to other honored guests. It is a great honor to address the 2021 Asia Pacific Leaders Dialogue of Malaria Elimination. Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji joined 17 other head of state at the 9th East Asia Summit in 2014 to agree on joint regional goal of and Asia Pacific free of malaria by 2030. Since then, India and countries across Asia Pacific have made remarkable progress toward the goal of malaria elimination. The World Health Organization provides technical leadership and coordination across the globe and in the Southeast Asia region. The Rollback Malaria Partnership to End Malaria is an important global voice for malaria elimination. The Asia Pacific Leaders Malaria Alliance 
working alongside the WHO, RBM, Global Fund and others has been consistent force in the Indo-Pacific providing a forum for leaders from two dozen countries to collaborate on activing, achieving our shared goal to eliminate, eliminate malaria by 2030. The 2021 Leaders Dialogue is one example carrying on a convening that has taken place for the past seven years. It is also my honor to announce today that India will host the 2022 Senior Official Meeting on Malaria Elimination for the first time in its history coinciding with the year of our nation's 75th anniversary of independence. At the time of independence in 1947, of a population of 330 million, about 75 million people were estimated to be infected with malaria every year. And the di direct mortality due to the disease was estimated at 0 0.8 million per annum. Government of India launched the National Malaria Control Program in April 1953. The program proved highly successful. Encouraged by this, the program was changed to a more ambitious National Malaria Eradication Programs in 1958. Since 2000, India has cut malaria cases by more than half and the number of malaria deaths by more than two-thirds. The current national framework for malaria elimination 2016 to 2030 based on the APLMA roadmap for malaria elimination laying down the detailed framework for malaria's elimination by 2030. The classification of states and districts into four categories describes different priority areas for different stages of malaria elimination. The category of passing concerned category 3 which are in intensified control phase calls out the district as the unit for planning and implementation of malaria elimination activities. In our region, as is the case in other regions of the globe, border areas remain one of the most challenging places to eliminate malaria. As national leaders and officials committed to malaria elimination, we must also commit to work together across borders and sectors. Despite the COVID-19 pandemic, India has led the fight against malaria with preemptive, with preemptive and proactive measures. On top of the national guidelines, state governments adopted their malaria elimination strategies and pursued tailored sub-national initiatives such as the Malaria Elimination Demonstration Project in Madhya Pradesh, Daman Project in Odisha, and Malaria Free Bastar Movement in Chhattisgarh. Today, there are a staggering 89% less deaths from malaria than 10 years ago in Asia Pacific.
the region has a historic opportunity to end this age old disease malaria elimination is projected to save over 0.4 million lives and avert 123 million malaria cases translating to almost 90 billion dollar in economic benefits in asia pacific let us continue our fight together and and once and for malaria while elevating our systems to confront confront the challenges that lie ahead india remain committed to the regional elimination goal of 2030 thank you so much jai hind asia pacific we thank honorable minister mandavia for his remarks and look forward to hosting the apple mass senior officials meeting in india next year our first panel discussion of the leaders dialogue is on cross sectoral approaches for malaria elimination our esteemed panelists for this session are her excellency dasho dechen wangmo who has been bhutan's minister of health since november 2018 prior to joining the government she worked as an international public health consultant to governments and not for profit organizations in asia africa and the united states she has an extensive background developing strategic policies for strengthening health systems and improving their governance and last year was named dasho one of bhutan's highest civilian honors for her outstanding service to the country honorable limpo was nominated as the president of the 74th world health assembly by member states of the who southeast asia region in 2020 His Excellency Dr. Sophon Mekton, the Honorable Vice Minister of Public Health, Government of Thailand. He has close to 25 years of experience in public health and has held various positions in Thailand's Ministry of Public Health. He has a medical degree and diploma in psychology from the Chulalongkorn University and a Master of Public Administration from National Institute of Development Administration in Thailand. The panel will be moderated by Dr. Sathak Das, CEO of Asia Pacific Alliance. Dr. Das joined Apple Ma from Harvard's T. H. Chan School of Public Health, where he was a research scientist and also a senior advisor at the Harvard Global Health Institute. Five years of experience as a public health scientist, development practitioner, and global health policy advisor have taken him around Asia and Africa. from cambodia and papua new guinea to west africa over to you sir thank you amita thank you amita and thank you to our panelists to your excellency minister wang mo your excellency minister mcton and also sending warm wishes and greetings to minister togamana and honorable secretary mcneil from the mcneil from the solomons who were unable to unfortunately join at this time to this panel but i do look forward to this discussion with you both so to begin minister wang mo could you describe how bhutan's ministry of health is collaborating with other ministries through the national committee for disease elimination to support malaria elimination efforts okay uh, good morning good afternoon good evening every all the participants around the world um it is it is an immense pleasure to be part of this forum uh, first and foremost i would like to convey uh, best wishes from the prime minister he was actually uh, looking forward to attending this but because of some competing agenda he was not able to make it uh, so but i want to convey his best wishes to everyone 
Um, in terms of collaboration, I think uh, Bhutan has always been guided by the overarching principle of health in all and health for all. Um, we try to include health policy in almost all the policies. And uh, since the primary health uh, declaration, the Almata declaration, I think that is something the Ministry of Health has been striving for the last few decades. Um, in particular to the disease elimination, of course, in 2019, we instituted the National Committee for Disease Elimination, and malaria, of course, is included in there as well as a very important agenda for, for the government. Um, and the committee itself is, of course, guided uh, by the technical uh, advisory group at all level uh, pertaining to the specific diseases. Um, and then we have uh, the malaria program um, that is also working uh, very hard uh, in terms of establishing collaboration within the ministry's program and outside the ministry's program. If we look at who are represented on the committee, so beside uh, the technical people from the health, we also have technical agencies who are also observer on the committee. But more importantly, we have all our national stakeholders who are members of the committee. So we have, uh, for example, we have home ministry, we have uh, education, we have uh, allied health agency, all five allied health agencies are represented, um, of course, guided by the, uh, the technical committee. Um, aligning with that vision of health in all policy um, and the the recognition that multi-sectoral approach is important towards eliminating diseases. Uh, we also have our national strategic plan that is also very much aligned with this vision of collaboration and coordination, not just within the entities of health, but outside the health sectors as well. Um, so this is where we are working very, very closely with, with our partners in the Ministry of Health uh, and um, outside the Ministry of Health as well, especially with Ministry of Home and Cultural Affairs, because I think malaria, one of the biggest challenge of malaria is, is the cross-border uh, dialogue that needs to happen. So we are in, in very close collaboration uh, with the Ministry of Home and Cultural Affairs as well. So I give back to you, Dr. Das. Thank you. Many thanks, Minister Wang Mo. Turning to you, Your Excellency Vice Minister Mekton, Thailand has done such a remarkable job in terms of driving down malaria cases. Could you share with us how multi-sectoral collaboration is critical for Thailand's vision and plan for integrating malaria into the broader health system. Over to you, Vice Minister. Honorable panelist, Mr. Appel, and distinguished guest, greeting from Thailand. Uh, Thailand, we have uh, endorsed by our cabinet to eliminate Malaria in 2024, and from 77 provinces in Thailand. Since uh, 1918 to uh, 2021, 42 provinces have been assessed to qualify for certification of malaria free provinces. And in uh, next year, 2022, we will access uh, more than five provinces. And for fiscal year 2012 to 2021, overall reduction of tests 92%. And for past modern falciparum, reduction is uh, 99%. For our strategy, intersectoral collaboration and active community involvement is an important component in our elimination strategy. Otherwise, we know 
will not succeed in achieving our target. To do this, we need to integrate malaria into the broader health system. This requires the critical role of uh, non-health agencies. Yeah, I would like to, to highlight two details in, in, in Thailand. Firstly, at the highest level, the National Malaria Eliminating Steering Committee, chaired by the uh, Deputy Prime, Prime Minister, has set strategy and targets for non-health agencies, especially Ministry of Interior, Ministry of Defense, Ministry of Education, Department of Policy, and several academic institutes. In addition, at the community level, we have very strong collaboration with community-based organizations, NGO, and civil society. Secondly, we involve the district health board and local government at the sub-district level, that is a sub-district administrative organization, SAO, by setting them to manage malaria elimination more effectively. We have also witnessed financial contribution for SAO, 1.5 million baht nationwide in the past five years. This is a bright side of uh, sustainable malaria elimination in Thailand, and we hope that 90% of local governments in malaria transmission area allocate budget for malaria elimination activity to 5 million baht within two years. Thank you. Many thank you, Vice Minister, for, the, for that perspective and again for your leadership in the region. No, as we all enter into this third year of learning with the pandemic, I think the, some of the more apocalyptic area um, in terms of whether or not we would see a generational setback so far have not materialized. Um, but I think it would be excellent to hear from you. And I'll start with you, Minister Wang Mo, to speak to if COVID-19 strengthened in any way coordination and collaboration between ministries, Oh, that COVID-19 has required all kinds of intersectoral collaboration, which we who've been fighting malaria, the oldest pandemic, know is critical. So for Bhutan, has it translated to greater coordination among ministries for cross-border collaboration? Over to you, Minister Wang Mo. Um, thank you, Dr. Das. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Good. Perfect. <laughs> um, absolutely. I, I think when we look at uh, the COVID pandemic today, two years into the pandemic, I think the greatest lesson we have learned as a health professional is that working in silos is no longer the norm. I think working together has to be the new norm. Of course, it has been unprecedented for health sectors across the world and, and, and Bhutan is no exceptions. I think we have for the first time realized how vulnerable our health sector is, our health system is, uh, where we have to take a serious reflection on, on our health system, health human resources, health financing um, going forward. So, so I think the biggest lesson COVID has taught us is that working together is a prerequisite for achieving what we want to achieve. And, and I want to include that. If I think if you are looking at the SDG goals, I think uh, this, is, this is high time that, uh, that we reassess our approach to addressing health. Um, we recognize that uh, if it's only through collective effort uh, that we can achieve uh, what we want to achieve. Uh, for Bhutan, COVID has been an awakening moment for all of us. You know, we have to manage with very limited health uh, human resources. And this is where I think we reached out to various sectors in terms of task shifting. For example, we have our volunteers, the day soups, 
the men in the men and women in orange uniform i think they uh, took uh, upon themselves a lot of the responsibilities in terms of doing surveillance in terms of doing monitoring in terms of ensuring um, that the protocols are followed um, similarly i think uh, what we have achieved as a nation uh, you know three mortality so far uh, i mean uh, covid vaccination touching almost 96% among the eligible population is a task that is uh, a direct result of collective effort of every sector coming in together towards this singular objective of averting a major public health crisis so going forward we hope that we see the same momentum in terms of addressing other um, infectious disease as well including malaria and we realize that if we put our efforts together work together in solidarity then there is nothing that is impossible to achieve mm -hmm. so we are what we have learned from the covid experience that we are quite positive that uh, bhutan will uh, meet its elimination ch uh, challenge or the goal very soon um, i think uh, if we look at uh, covid response uh, from we really adopted what we call a whole of a society approach where public came forward uh, with with a lot of solidarity there was one singular source of information that was either the ministry of health or uh, the prime minister's office there were a lot of collaboration at every level at the national level at the district level at the block level at the community level um, and we would like to see a similar uh, collaboration and coordination uh, for malaria elimination as well now having said that um, one key component of the malaria elimination is the cross border elimination having a very good surveillance system in place I know the surveillance system we have for COVID has really paid us off. And I know a lot of my health worker who has put in a lot of their extra time and effort into building this surveillance system up from ground up. Um, so similarly for malaria, it is only building onto the existing system and enhancing and addressing the existing gap within the surveillance system. So we must have a robust surveillance system if we were to go towards elimination target um, it is it's very encouraging to see china meet the elimination target with with the diversity the population uh, bhutan is very small uh, so we are we are highly encouraged uh, to to follow the footsteps of uh, countries who have achieved uh, elimination target um, uh, so this is where I think platforms such as this one um, encourages leaders to come together and talk about cross collaboration, not just within the country, but with, with uh, the countries outside uh, in the region as well. I think this has to be a regional target. Uh, I think this is where regional leaders need to come together to, to achieve this. Um, then only I think we are moving positively towards the SDG goal. So, so with that, uh, um, back to you, Dr. Das. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Wangbo, very much. Vice, Vice Minister Mekton, similarly to you, as you reflect on COVID-19 and its impact in Thailand, do you feel it has strengthened coordination and collaboration between ministries? Over to you, Vice Minister. Definitely. Thailand's response to COVID-19 during the past three years has uh, undermined the, the of monthly sector and in the ministerial coordination and collaboration. And this could be a leverage to mobilize domestic resource for at least two, two main areas. Firstly, under the Thai 
communicable disease act 2015 we have the committee especially in the highest in the highest in the national committee and in the provincial level we have the committee that is a, the idea that we will uh, to commit to eliminate malaria that the uh, from the app and experience we have set the team the team to respond respond uh, in surveillance in uh, to operate for covid 19 pandemic this particularly result in, in development of investigation and response. So we have uh, have experience that we can use this uh, system to control and eliminate malaria. The second one is a uh, considerable resource and expertise of a uh, private business, private private sector has been extended to public health during the COVID nineteen pandemic. This private sector contribution can possibly extend to malaria elimination in Thailand is the achieve sustainable economic growth. I would like to uh, to say about my friends workers from ASEAN neighbors are undeniable important to border trade and Thai economic activities. Therefore, the private sector should be willing to invest in the well-being and productivity of these workers in malaria transmission area. I think that these two men, that is our experience. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Minister, for your perspective and again also for your leadership in not only in the regional fight against so in terms of cooperation in this time of, of the pandemic. And so with that, I a quick note in summary. Uh, the first is um, we had a limited ability to bring in uh, partners from across Asia Pacific, given the virtual platform that we are using and the inability to conduct this convening in person. But by no means is the emission of Solomon Islands as a result of their inability to connect today, or for that matter, so many of the countries um, who are not participating directly in the panels in any way a signal that there is anything less than a commitment to, for, for malaria elimination to occur across all borders of Asia Pacific for it to happen. So with that, I am so grateful to you, Minister Wang Mo, Vice Minister Mekton, for your participation in this panel, and most importantly, for your commitment to understand that all of the countries in this region are links on a chain, and the 2030 goal is something that we will do together. So many thanks to you. And with that, back over to you, Amita. Thank you, Sartan. As you're all aware, the World Malaria Report 2021 was launched by the World Health Organization last week on the 6th of December. We will now hear from Dr. Pedro Alonso, director of the WHO Global Malaria Program, who will share highlights from the report. Dr. Alonso has spent over 30 years in public health, having started his career as a physician working in West Africa. Prior to taking on the WHO position in 2014, Dr. Alonso was director of the Barcelona Institute for Global Health and professor of global health at the University of Barcelona. His scientific research work has focused on key determinants of morbidity and mortality in the most vulnerable population groups. Dr. Alonso. Honorable uh, minister, prime minister authorities, um, Dear friends, dear colleagues from Appleman, uh, it is my pleasure to uh, be able to address you today and share some uh, thoughts and um, and information. I wish this could be done in in person, and I still have such warm uh, memories of my my trip to Bhutan. <clears throat> just uh, um, just. Uh, Two, two and a half years ago. 
um, what an inspiring uh, visit that was and how welcome we were and how inspired uh, I was by, by, by the efforts and the success of, of Bhutan in driving towards elimination. Unfortunately, today it has to be a, a, a message across the, the screen. And, um, and this happens just in the wake of, um, of the World Malaria Report having just been recently published. A very challenging time uh, for all of us, and most importantly for countries in the midst of, of, of the uh, yet unfinished uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And the World Malaria Report, uh, which we have just uh, released, um, uh, confirms that the disruptions associated with um, the COVID-19 pandemic have impacted on uh, our global fight against malaria. We have witnessed an increase of at least uh, 14 million malaria cases and um, uh, around 47,000 extra deaths directly linked to the, those disruptions associated with COVID-19. That is always bad news. But we also acknowledge that it could have been a lot worse. Um, at the beginning of, the, of COVID-19 in, in May 2020, WHO released uh, uh, work that um, uh, estimated the potential impact of COVID-19 on the fight against malaria. And the worst case scenarios um, included a, a potential uh, 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 prediction that we could be doubling malaria deaths and pushing the malaria fight back to the beginning of this century in the case of, of, of COVID-19 having severe sustained uh, disruption. Well, clearly that has not happened and that's a source of, of, of good news in, in that regard. But the problem is far from, from over and we may need to remain vigilant and the countries need to uh, continue implementing the strenuous efforts that have managed to avoid the worst uh, uh, potential consequences. Otherwise, the World Malaria Report um, uh, shows at a global level that the fight against malaria remains stalled, um, that we are finding it hard to go on making further progress. However, uh, this uh, picture is not equal everywhere in the world. And uh, the good news keep on coming to us from, from the Asia and the Asia Pacific uh, region. Uh, on the one hand, the greater Mekong sub-region, um, uh, Myanmar, uh, the Yunnan province of China, uh, Cambodia, uh, Thailand, Laos, uh, Vietnam, continue to make incredible progress towards um, uh, elimination. They have averted the, the, the risk of uh, uh, multidrug resistance uh, spilling over to other parts of the world. And indeed, China, which includes Yunnan province, has been certified malaria-free. So we are envisioning um, a future of uh, a malaria-free greater Mekong sub-region within the coming years. But it's not just that part of, uh, of Asia that has continued to make progress. India um, has, even in the face of COVID, continued to make uh, great strides forward, reduce the malaria burden, as so as have other countries in, in, in Asia. So this meeting is timely. We applaud. The, the work that the countries are doing. We continue to make great progress in Asia towards our, our shared vision of an Asia free of malaria, contributing eventually to a world free of malaria. I thank you all for the work that you're doing, for the inspiration that you bring to the global fight against this scourge of mankind. Thank you very much. Thank you. With this, we come to the close of session one. I request all participants to return to the attendee hub and tune into the next session. Thank you. <laughs>